In the third part of the skills mission, let's understand an important concept of what the interaction between skills and employment is. Whereas em employability depends on one's competency-based skills, the employment is the available opportunities. The world over, employment is available in three sectors. The primary sector of the economy makes direct use of natural resources. This includes agriculture, forestry, fishing, and mining. In contrast, the secondary sector produces manufactured goods and the tertiary provides services. In terms of employment potential and job creation, the primary markets account for 10 to 15 percent, the secondary about 35 percent, and the tertiary about 50 to 60 percent. A vibrant manufacturing sector largely depends on the primary sector for its survival and which will drive the GDP growth of the country. Automobile manufacturing and construction are important drivers. Obviously, if the growth of primary and the secondary sector lags, the services sector must fill the void. It's also necessary to understand the low employability of the current skill trainees. Acquiring a certain level skill in a certain sector does not ensure an employment since the industry does not have defined job roles at every skill level in every sector. Hence, meaningful employment will only happen if higher order skills in the same sector are grouped together. This will require implementation of the National Skill Qualification Framework in both letter and spirit. Let's see what other countries do in the area of skills so we can take home some lessons. The Department of Employment in Australia carries out research to identify skill shortages in the Australian labor market. The research results provide information about skill shortages at the state, territory, and or the national level. However, an Indian database on similar lines is hard to come by. It will aid meaningful skill dispensation in the country if credible numbers as associated with the skill levels and job roles in various sectors identified by the sector skill councils or SSCs and the National Skill Development Corporation, NSDC, is available in the public domain. Germany has a well-developed and institutionalized VET research capacity, including the Federal Institute for VET and a national network of research centers that study different aspects of the system to support continuous innovation and improvements in the vocational education and training space. In German society, the vocational education and training, which they call as dual system, is deeply embedded and widely respected. It offers qualifications 
in a broad spectrum of professions and flexibly adapts to the changing needs of the labor market. A major strength of the dual system is the high degree of engagement and ownership on the part of employers and other social partners. There is a lot to learn from both the models that I have explained here. But the system is also characterized by an intricate web of checks. You know, the German system is also characterized by an intricate web of checks and balances at the national, state, municipal and company levels that ensures that the short-term needs of employers do not distort broader educational and economic goals. Extremely important. Now, there are skills that are easy to impart, easy to measure, and easy to certify. A revenue model built around these skills may get off the ground, but will it sustain? For example, trade-based skills like those required for a machinist or welding or plumbing are easy to impart. The ITIs are currently doing it. With a reimbursement model at play, most skill centers would want to do similar. But without the credible numbers of demand side, how many centers should actually be permitted to impart those skills? A holistic approach to skills imparted and their employment potential must be assessed for the skill mission to succeed. A labor management information system, LMIS, is most essential then. Besides all of the above, India has a multitude of traditional skills. Every state's cultural ethos bind tradition to art and skills. These skills have an unexplored job market and consequent earning potential that has not been explored or researched and hence have been shunned as revenue models. All these need to be reinvented what you are seeing now is a beautiful Madhubani painting from Bihar. Wood carving, handicrafts, stone masonry, paintings, metal work, textiles, pottery, paper mashes, carpet weaving are all arts based on skills. Each one has a potential for not only self-employment, but can provide employment for others too. Besides providing tremendous boost to village economy, they preserve traditional skills. Another exquisite skill work is a handcrafted swing, or what we term as jula, inside the Phool Mahal, Junagar Fort, Bikaner, and this is an artisan producing marble system. This is from Agra. Friends, we are living in a technology driven and industrialized world where people increasingly are forgetting the traditional crafts and moving over to new opportunities. Hence, artisanship is dying and the artisans are moving to alternative sources of income generation in order to survive. For example, look at the daily wage labors in farming. Many of them very skilled in farming techniques 
are migrating to cities and probably ending up as cheap labor in the unorganized sector. We see that happening in Mumbai, in Chennai, in Bangalore, and so on. Metal craft skills were of a very high order in the country. Bidri ware originating from Bida in Karnataka uses a blackened alloy of zinc and copper inlaid with thin sheets of pure silver. Pemberthi metal craft originating in Pemberthi in Warangal is popular for his exquisite sheet metal artworks. This meticulous brass work art flourished during the reign of Kakatiya's empire. Don't we think that these art forms should be preserved? Dhokra is a ferrous metal casting using the lost wax casting technique which was used in India for over 4,000 years and is still used. They are known for primitive simplicity, enhancing the surroundings, enchanting folk motifs and forceful forms. Some of us know Kamrupi brass and bell metal products of Kamrup in Assam famous for their beauty and strength of form and utility. Besides, there are crafts of South India, Bihar, Rajasthan, Moradabad in UP, a very great uh, art that we have and the largest exports happen from Moradabad, handicrafts, Gujarat and many others which are equally fascinating. Many of these art forms are dying. Can we revive them and provide new lease of life in the skill mission 